Hi friends, welcome to our Power is Within podcast. I'm your host, Chasmith. My mission for this podcast is to inspire you to take your power back and to realize that you are the healer that you've been looking for all along. We are all capable of healing in mind, in body, and in soul. Today's episode is sponsored by CFS School, a nervous system healing program that has helped almost 1,500 people transform and recover from a wide variety of mind-body disorders such as chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, long COVID, autoimmune disorders, POTS, gut sensitivities, and so much more. This is accomplished through teaching you an integrative brain retraining approach, polyvagal therapeutics, and trauma resolution techniques such as somatic experiencing tools, inner child work, and parts work. CFS School is committed to empowering you on your healing journey, meet you where you're at, and is passionate about supporting you in recognizing that you have everything you need to heal already inside of you. Alongside the self-study program, you can also apply for the next live cohorts, which are launching at the end of June. You can learn more on Instagram at CFS School or click the link in the show notes to book a discovery call and sign up today. So our guest today is Diala Hanna. And what is so fun about Diala is she actually has a program called The Power Within. Does that sound familiar? It's so in sync with the title of this podcast, which I think is how she actually found me, which is really cool. So Diala wants to offer everyone listening a complimentary copy of her ebook, The Happiness Code. And she's on the podcast today to share with us her story of how she transformed her life. I absolutely adored talking and having this chat with Diala, and I have no doubt that you will find value in today's episode as well. So please enjoy. Diala, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited to get to chat with you. I know that we've communicated quite a bit offline back and forth. And I really did want to start just because the premise of this podcast really is about our power being within and us having our capacity to self-heal through, you know, various tools and mindsets and just different ways that we can heal from the inside out. And I know that you have personally dealt with some physical health challenges in your life and you've experienced a lot of success and results in that realm. So I was wondering if we can actually just start with you sharing what what chronic illness that you have been healing and recovering from yourself. Sure. So um I think around maybe 7 7 years ago I was I was diagnosed with uh, ulcerative colitis which is an autoimmune disease that uh, basically uh, causes inflammation in in particular in the colon, and um, it was it it was around at that time that I was actually extremely stressed, under a lot of stress, uh, whether it is at work or you know just life in general, and um, and then my my best friend was kind of telling me like you know Diala you complain a lot, <laughs> uh, when was kind of like she asked me a question that kind of. Uh, threw me off. She said, when was the last time you're really happy? And that was an an eye opener for me because I started really asking myself this question and, and um, kind of my spiritual journey or my healing journey started then because I realized that I must be doing something wrong. Is my body's kind of telling me something. So I decided to start understanding more about happiness and how you, how do we go back to the to the mindset of a child, if you want, you know, a happier uh, mindset. So I started my journey by just like reading, you know, self-development books, but then I I dug deeper into into neuroscience and and understanding how, you know, your your thoughts and your feelings and your, your, your actions actually create your reality. And there was a lot of healing that I've done through several, uh, you know, type of classes and courses. And um, one of the major one I believe that helped me is is understanding that that we are not victims, right? In in our life, 
and uh, and every story that we have and every kind of vertical of our life, whether it is relationship, love, uh, you know, uh, physical fitness, uh, health, work, uh, we all have stories that we tell ourselves, and uh, and and if these stories are kind of uh, uh, victim type of stories, meaning that we are either blaming ourselves or others, either, um, you know, shaming ourselves or others, uh, you know, having fear, uh, worry, all of these feelings are really not helpful for our, our health, mental health and physical health. So it was a very revealing moment when I started writing down these stories about the different verticals of life and completely reframing them. Like I decided that I'm not a victim anymore. And I can, if you want the process of forgiveness and gratitude, forgive myself and others for what I believed, you know, uh, uh, I was experiencing. And I decided to rewrite my story. I decided to rewrite my, uh, you know, my thoughts, my, my beliefs. And that changed my life completely because it allowed me to get outside of the box of, you know, this is how life should be, one, two, three, four, and say, no, this is how my life, this is how I want my life to be. You know, I am a mother, I am a wife, I'm an architect and a developer, but I'm also a mindset coach. I'm, uh, I'm a master NLP life coach. I am, you know, a soul. So um, so that kind of opened up my, and I'm also a, a kid's book, right, right like author, uh, that I wrote kids' books with my son, that allowed me to kind of open up my life completely and to say there's no, there's not one way for living life, you know? And and you can, at any point in time, rewrite your story and rewrite your life. And that, I think, uh, you know, released a lot of uh, the pressure and a lot of the stories that were not helpful for me. And um, and created a lot more, I would say, internal peace, you know, and allowed me to take action in a lot of ways in many different parts of my life. So uh, that's how, how my journey started. It's really awesome because you had this illness and it turned out to be a major catalyst in you really transforming your life and the trajectory of the life you were living. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Because, because you know, sometimes you don't uh, really take, take action to create the life that you want unless you, you go through some kind of a challenge or, or a pain. Uh, because and this challenge is supposed to kind of teach you something. And I'm, I'm, in my mind and what I've learned is that it's not going away unless you learn the lessons. So, you know, I, I ask myself, yeah. what are the lessons, you know, that I'm learning here? What am I supposed to learn and who am I supposed to become? And what is this teaching me? Have you gotten answers to that question yet? What the lessons <laughs> have been for you? Yes, of course. Because, I mean, I think what, one of them is is like what, what we discussed before, which is basically uh, I wrote down what were my limiting beliefs, you know, like what did I think? of myself and my life and, and rewrite them completely, remove the limiting beliefs that I have and remove the negative emotions that I had. And I used, I mean, obviously meditation, for example, changed my life completely because it allows you to, to have this stillness and silence so that you can connect with yourself and with the, with the divine, you know, and, and that helped me a lot because a lot of the times we have all these thoughts going on all the time in our heads and and they're negative thoughts and so they're not helpful in any way shape or form and what they create in our bodies is actually uh you know i would say hormones of stress and cortisol and and uh, and puts us in this uh uh what we call the sympathetic nervous system where where you're always in a fight or flight mode you're always ready to uh, get upset or get offended or get worried or, you know, and this is not helpful or in any shape or form for our physical body, let alone our mental health. So I decided to shift, if you want, my thoughts and my feelings 
and be aware of them and be conscious of them as much as I can. I would say 80% of the time, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to target even more. So some days are easier than others. But that uh, actually like uh, allows the, the body to heal, right? Allows the body to heal when you get into the the, the 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 parasympathetic nervous system basically of of love and forgiveness and and happiness and and um, compassion towards yourself and others uh, it allows you to see the world completely differently and and yes I think it did if you want uh, create that passion inside of me to to help other people because the best way to kind of uh, serve the world is if you learn something, you live it, and then you share it. So this is uh, w- one of the reasons why I became a master NLP life coach. It's because I want to kind of share this message and I want to share it uh, and help people, you know, get out of their, uh, out of their way, <laughs> technically, in order to live the life that they want. That's awesome. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So what are, so you said that you've, worked a lot on shifting thoughts and feelings and beliefs, and you're still working on shifting things. What are the tools that you use to really support you with this type of practice? Uh, Right. So I would say one of the most important one for sure is meditation. Okay. That is, uh, is something that I believe everybody should you know, pick up. And I know that a lot of people say, hey, but I'm not a, I can't sit down. I can't sit still. It's not for me. And and it's okay because you can meditation. Right now I meditate, for example, for, I can get up to 50 minutes, but I started with one minute, right? So you can start with one minute and it's okay. Even if your mind is, is all over the place, you can just, just be aware that this is what's happening and bring it back to stillness. So I would say, that's that's a number one very very strong element that uh, helps me uh, you know through my journey. The second one I would say is is gratitude because um, a lot of the times we we don't realize uh, you know what what we have and so uh, you know practicing gratitude for everything that we have is something that is really really helpful and has helped me a lot as well as practicing gratitude for what we want in our life, like what we want to happen. Because if you feel grateful for for what you want already before it actually happens, then you're kind of maximizing your chances of having it because it's it's not anymore something that is far away from you. It's something that you're already thankful for and you believe that it's going to happen. So that's something that is, uh, you know, massively, massively helpful. And then the, the the third thing I would say is is basically you know removing those those limiting beliefs that that we have. So how do we do that? For example, write down in an, in every uh, vertical of of life, which is for example, like I said before, relationship, uh, you know, love, uh, work, health, and uh, community. For example, write down what are your limiting beliefs. What what do you believe? you can't become or you can't do or uh, what is stopping you really from achieving what you want to feel or what you want to experience. So you write it down on a piece of paper and then write underneath it. Uh, first of all, you kind of take a pen and, and uh, you know, put a line across it completely. And then you write down underneath it the opposite the complete opposite, like open up your mind, really. What happens if the opposite is real? And then take another piece of paper, like a completely new piece of paper, and write down those new beliefs that you wrote down and close your eyes and, and feel feel them completely and say them out loud. And while you're saying them out loud, really feel the the you know the the new belief. Feel it as if it's you, feel it as if it's real. And then I would say then these would become your affirmations, you know, your daily affirmations, your personal daily affirmations, not, you know, affirmations that you pick up from, uh, from YouTube or, for, you know, that belong to another person, but technically your, your personal daily affirmations because your brain actually 
takes orders from you, right? So depending on what you're thinking, how you're feeling, it's taking orders from you and it will take you to what you focus on. So if you focus on negativity, if you focus on your limiting beliefs, whatever you do, whatever you, you know, you say in your conscious mind, meaning, hey, I'm strong, I am rich, I am, you know, if you're down, you know, if your unconscious mind, you still believe the old beliefs, the limiting beliefs, then your brain is going to take you to the old limiting beliefs. It's not going to take you to the new ones, but you can reprogram your mind. You can reprogram your mind using this strategy that I, I just discussed and bring it to the fourth, like to, to the, to the front of your, of your mind during the day, whenever you start uh, behaving the old way. And whenever you start thinking of the old limiting beliefs, stop yourself because now it's in front of your, you know, it's at the forefront of your brain. Stop yourself and repeat and uh, the old, sorry, repeat the new beliefs that you, that you wrote down and feel them because uh, the, the conscious mind is the goal setter, but the unconscious mind is the goal getter. It's the feeler. And if you feel it and believe it, your mind's going to take you there. So all of your actions will align with the new mindset and the new beliefs that you wrote down. So, yeah, I would say these are, these are the three basically uh, really important uh, first steps. And then the fourth step is then once you have done this clearing, once you have done gratitude and forgiveness and um, meditation, obviously meditation is a nonstop uh, thing, and you have removed your limiting beliefs, then it's time to write down really what are your goals and your future vision. And then uh, the last thing is taking inspired action every single day towards your vision. Because it's not going to happen if you just think about it or, or write about it or feel it. You have to take action in order to get it. And these are the steps that you took to help you shift your mindset and change your life? Yes, absolutely. These are the steps that I took. I would say, I would like to add, because it's the mindset is a massive, uh, obviously a massive element in this whole journey. And even my, my German doctor uh, called me one day when, I, when my inflammation was gone. And she called me and she was like, Mrs. Hannah, what are you doing? Can you please explain to me? It's gone. And so I had to explain to her everything that I was doing in terms of the works of the mindset. And now my German doctor started meditating. So I'm, I'm very <laughs> proud of that. And um, I would say the second pillar, which is very, very important, other than mindset, is also uh, taking care of your physical body. So I also did lifestyle uh, changes, obviously. So for example... I started eating food that doesn't cause inflammation. I stopped, I would say 80, 20%. But when I removed the inflammation completely, I had stopped completely processed foods. I had stopped sugar. I had stopped uh, coffee. I don't personally like alcohol. So I, you know, that wasn't the problem. But, you know, stopping alcohol helps a lot. And um, I was eating organic whole foods. And I think that was a major shift also in me removing the inflammation as well and and moving my body and and working on my mindset and i would say the the the, the last pillar is is basically um uh, the soul so it's mind body and soul when everything is aligned then then you, your body you know gives you the signs it gives you the signs that you're doing the right thing mm -hmm. Where did you learn all this? Was it like a slow and steady process where you were learning little by little and practicing implementing it and then just noticing the changes? Yeah, I would say it is a, a slow, steady process because I'm the kind of person that likes to read a lot and take a lot of courses and listen to a lot of, you know, uh, inspiring people. So I learned it on a step. It was like a journey and things kept on coming up to me, you know, whether it is online or or, uh, you know, in a book or something like that, uh, that helped me take this, this process. And I, I also, I respect all, all religions, but I, I personally also got closer to, to, uh, to my religion. So I reread, for example, uh, you know, the, the Bible and, 
and there's a lot to learn, you know, from from uh, just a connection, if you want, right? So praying and meditating helps you connect with with the divine. I would say that is very very helpful because it gives you it, it makes your trust uh, bigger and and higher, and it helps with uh, believing that you are being guided and protected, right, by this higher force, which which makes uh, life much, much easier and you, you, you know that you're not alone. So th- that's why I say the, the, the different, uh, you know, verticals, all of them are extremely, extremely important. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Now, early on, you mentioned that uh, when you had first gotten sick, you had a good friend and she had brought up that you complained a lot. Yeah. And asked like when you were ever actually happy. Where are you at today in terms of complaining? And do your friends and family and people closest to you see the difference? Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So complaining is is not anymore part of my, uh, you know, part of my life. And uh, even, for example, uh, you know, a, a simple, you know, like gossiping, for example, you know, that also I removed completely from my uh from my uh, from my life because it drains your energy so imagine that every day you have 20 matches and these matches represent energy you can decide how you want to spend those matches are you spending them on complaining and gossiping and worrying and 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 blaming and shaming or are you spending them on uh you know appreciating and being grateful and forgiving and taking action towards what you want so definitely definitely uh, this is uh, this is not part of my life anymore, and I hear it from um, you know my husband, my my son, my family, my friends uh, that they definitely see uh, a difference. And I and I heard it from another friend the other day. He was telling me, um, and we're not extremely close, but he 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 couldn't help himself. But he he told me, I want to tell you something that you're not the same person that I met you know, 10 years ago, and I can see and feel your happiness. So yeah, I would say I I did receive uh, feedback as well. That's awesome. Yeah, that's Mm -hmm. got to feel really good. Throughout these years, because you said you first got sick seven years ago. So this has been like a seven year quest, and you've come a long way. But we know that it's very easy to say, I want to change my beliefs. It's very easy to say, I want to not complain anymore. It's very easy to say, I want to you know, have different behavior. But as you already mentioned, the conscious mind sets the goal, but it's the, the changes happen in a deeper level. And so it's easy to say, I don't want to complain anymore and much harder to do. What have been some of the bigger struggles that you've dealt with over these seven years as you've been on this journey of healing and growth? And how did you overcome them? Uh, the, the bigger struggles, I would say I, I, I kind of agree with you that it's, it's much, much easier said than done. And, and this is why, uh, you know, my journey kept on going deeper and deeper into understanding the, the, the neuroscience and to understanding basically uh, the latest, if you want, discoveries of of how to change your habits and how to change your your thoughts and beliefs. And one of the reasons why I I decided to get certified with with uh, NLP, which is neuro linguistic programming, uh, so that you you know so that it helps me a lot in really understanding how how the brain works, right? Because if you equip yourself with knowledge, then uh, you know, it would be easier to apply it. If you if you don't know, you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, kind of thing. So it, once you, so what I would I would recommend is is for whoever is on this quest is to ask for help. I mean, that's one of the things that I've done. I've asked for help. I took courses. I took classes. I got certified in order to uh, allow myself to have all the tools that are available for for this uh, shift. Mm -hmm. But in, in that, what was like the hardest thing for you to shift? Like, was it the complaining or was it changing a limit, a very deep set limiting belief? Like, what do you personally feel was like one of the bigger challenges for you in the, in the Mm -hmm. journey? It's very interesting because, you know, I would say that it's, it 
Okay, it wasn't necessarily uh, the, the biggest challenge, but I think the most impactful is changing uh, the beliefs because, uh, you know, writing down the, the stories that I used to tell myself about the different verticals and shifting them was a major, uh, you know, if you want, uh, a problem that I resolved. Uh, so that was... And, and obviously, if you, when you when you start writing down the new story, it takes time for the story to become real. Also, the new story, so uh, it takes time for uh, the, the the new beliefs to set in, and for you to take the action in order to uh, you know towards towards this new belief. So I think that for me was the uh, you know the, the biggest challenge, if you want, is basically understanding that you are not a victim, but you are the creator of your life. And so how do you rewrite your story? That was that was the strongest one, I would say. And um, it took some time for me to, to do the shift. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes so much sense. So what are some of your daily rituals nowadays for you to continue on this journey, to continue to grow and evolve and also sustain the growth that you've had and not default back into old patterns? Right. So so I uh, well, started this kind of ritual uh, a while ago and I wake up, uh, I try to wake up like 5, 5.30 in the morning before everybody wakes up in the house. And, uh, and the first thing that I do is I pray. And then the second thing is I meditate. Uh, so that those two things are very, very important for me because they, they calm me down. And then what I do after that is um, I have my goals written down, what I want to achieve in my life. And um, I break those down into, uh, if you want, smaller achievable actions. And I choose every day one or two actions that I do in the morning before I get ready and go to work. So this is what I do kind of the, in the morning. I wake up, I, I pray, I meditate, I take action. In between, I also see my son before he goes to school. And I take, and I take action, one action or two actions that I've written down for the day that will allow me to reach my goal by the end of the year. So that's, that's what I do. And then, you know, I... At night, if you want, before sleeping, uh, I also, um, you know, try to uh, write down five things that I'm that I'm grateful for, and then pray and make sure that I write down what are the two or three things that I will ach- like work on tomorrow, the next day, so that in the morning I'm not wondering what am I doing. It's very clear. I know what I'm gonna do in the morning after meditation and prayer, and then obviously I do exercise. Like I have my personal trainer t- twice a week. And then during the rest of the, the week, I, I also, uh, sometimes I walk, sometimes I cycle as well, because moving the body is, is very important. And then for, for the food, because what you eat is also extremely, extremely important. If I feel that I have uh, slipped away from, you know, eating the healthy food, I also go to ask for help. And so now, for example, I have... Um, a health coach and a and a doctor in natural medicine that is uh, I'm, I'm I'm following up with her to make sure I eat you know just kind of a follow up to make sure I I stay on the right uh, the right diet if you want or the right lifestyle. That's awesome and yeah, mm-hmm. support so helpful. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it's a lot help more helpful to have somebody on your in your corner than trying to do it all alone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, we're talking about, you know, you said you're talking a lot about like being a happier person. And a lot of times in the growth or self personal development world, we can fall into this mindset of toxic positivity, Mm -hmm. where when we start to talk about seeking happiness, we can sometimes think that means that we're supposed to always be happy and we're never allowed to feel sad or angry or any of the quote unquote labeled negative emotions. What's that journey been like for you to make sure that as you're really trying to embody more happiness that you still very much acknowledge the, you know, the yin and the yang aspects of life. 
Yes, absolutely. I mean, you're you're hundred percent, you're hundred percent right, and uh, about this, and it's not about being happy all the time. That's just not realistic, and not necessarily helpful. But I think the idea is when you have those negative emotions, it's it's about not staying there for like hours and days and weeks and months and years, right? It's about I have this. Um, uh, practice that I do, which has helped me a lot, honestly. So for example, if I'm feeling, I don't know, there's there's something that's bothering me and I don't notice that I'm kind of uh, hiding it. And then I, I ask myself, because it's not going away, I ask myself this question, you know, what emotion am I feeling right now? So I stop and I ask myself this question, what emotion am I feeling right now? And I, I have to then really pinpoint what emotion. And so, for example, let's say I feel I feel sad, right? I feel sad. And so I ask myself, why am I feeling sad? And then if you ask your unconscious mind, it will give you the answer right away. So, I, for example, an answer comes to me. This is why I'm feeling sad. And then I would ask myself and I would say, so how is this, uh, you know, helpful to me? And is there a way of, of reframing this thought that will help me, you know, remove that sadness feeling. And it's okay to feel it. Like I would just take a deep breath and feel the sadness, right? But then then you have to then decide, are you going to stay there or are you you're going to reframe your mindset in order for you to not only uh, remove yourself from these, these feelings, but also take action towards what's uh, upsetting you. For example, you know, maybe you need to uh, go talk to someone and 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 put limits to a conversation that that upsets you. Uh, or so, unless you feel the emotion and decide to reframe it, you're not going to take action towards, you know, healing or getting yourself out of that uh, emotion kind of thing. So that's something that's a practice that uh, helps me a lot. In, in, in asking myself, instead of kind of hide the emotion or keep it inside and not taking care of it and not uh, working on it, I stop and I ask myself, what am I feeling right now? And I, then I ask why, I reframe, and then I take a deep breath and either I let go or I take action. I like that. I really like that. Thank you for sharing that. That's helpful. So what are you up to these days? Um, so uh, these days, uh, basically, um, I am uh, I'm working on, uh, you know, I'm working with my clients on, on the coaching. So that's something that, uh, that helps me and, and in my journey, because it is my mission to uh, help women and, uh, and kids actually discover the power they have within them. So I have uh, created an online course called The Power Within, which is one of the reasons why I was really attracted uh, by the name of your podcast. And, uh, and then I have, like, uh, I work also with, with a group of people as well, uh, with The Power Within Accelerator. And then I have my one-to-one kind of uh, clients as well. So this is what I'm working on, and this is what, um, you know, helps me on, on this mission. Uh, to 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 achieve this mission that's awesome can you is there anything more that you can share with us about that program the power sure. within program sure sure absolutely so basically um in the power within program uh wh- what we do is first we um I, I talk about those three pillars right the 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 body mind and soul and uh, for for us to really understand that it's not only the mindset, but also we need to take care of our body and we need to also connect and take care of our soul. So because, you know, this is a journey, it's, an, it's a holistic journey. So I talk about that and then we go through the exercises of the victim consciousness versus the creator consciousness and uh, kind of that exercise of releasing the story and rewriting the new identity of who you are and who you really are. Because a lot of the the limiting beliefs mainly don't belong to you, possibly belong to your parents or to society or to your husband or to your friend or, 
they, they don't necessarily belong to you. So, you know, this is a, a, a belief that you took on at some point in time and made it yours, but you can release it. So we go through that uh, journey of releasing it. And then I go through also uh, this, uh, like uh, the, the neuroscience and, and, and um, uh, teaching basically uh, how does the brain work and what are the prime directives of the brain. And because if you understand really how it works, then then you have the power <laughs> over it. So that's something that, that that we go through, and then we go through the basically the rewriting of your story, the rewriting of your future, and we I show you how to put the action plan, and then how to use your time and how to use your new habits in order to achieve it. Because if you don't take inspired action, it's not going to happen. So this is what the program is about. Technically, it's about uh, helping uh, people, uh, removing their limiting beliefs and their unwarranted negative emotions in order to rewrite their story and build the, the life that they want. That's awesome. Mm. <laughs> and you also have, you mentioned to me, a, another an ebook too that you have as a free resource available that you're going to extend to the listeners called The Happiness Code? Yes, The Happiness Code. I would love to share it with the, with, you know, with, the, with whoever is listening. Yeah, I'm sure people will really appreciate that. Is there anything you can share with us about what that is or what, like what that consists of? Right. So, so basically it, it consists of, of the five steps uh, to, to reach happiness, which is a lot of what we uh, what we discussed as well, but it's about really, uh, you know, uh, you know, understanding that you are not, for example, you're not your life, you are not your job, you are not the life that you live right now. If you're not happy, you can rewrite the story and how to do that through the five steps of uh, removing the limiting beliefs and, and negative emotions about, uh, you know, upgrading your mindset because, your mindset will, will, will give you the power to deal with the situation that you are in and to, to rewrite your story and to say, that's it, this is my life and, and I'm creating it. I'm not a victim. And then going through basically, uh, um, you know, like, like I described it before uh, regarding, um, you know, writing down your future vision and then how to take action. That's awesome. That's really cool. Where was this inspired from? So this is uh, basically it's it's a it's a, it's a co combination from my my journey. Uh, it's a combination from everything that I've learned over the last seven years and what has changed my life personally. Because and then seeing it happen with with my clients also is a, is a testament to uh, to this to this process and the strategy. Okay, and what kind of um, situation might somebody be in, or what? might be somebody's goals in their life that would um, make them a good fit for you as a client? I guess like what would somebody be seeking if they were to want to hire you as their coach? Yeah, sure. So basically, if you are someone that, uh, you know, are is a bit lost in terms of what your purpose is in life, but you are you want to you want to create a purpose for life, and you don't know how to do that, and you have uh, limiting beliefs that are stopping you from achieving it. Then uh, you know I can help you release those uh, limiting beliefs and help you clarify your your mindset in order to uh, you know discover the, your your life purpose and and put a plan to to achieve it. So that's that's uh, a type of person I can help. And then if you are, for example, a very successful person, but you are burnt out and you don't know how to find the balance and the alignment in your life, and that's something I also can help you with. I love that. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, what else? Is there anything else that you feel like you would want to share with my audience and my listeners that maybe I haven't asked you about yet? <laughs> For me, I think, look, my, my mission in life, I said, I said it before, is to empower people. But I want to reiterate the importance of the three pillars, which is the mind, body, and soul. And that it's not only about taking care of only your mindset, 
that is crucial and extremely important, but also taking care of your body and what you put in it, what you eat and how you move your body. And then finally, your connection with the divine, with meditation and prayer. I think if this was, this is my message, if you want, my message to the world. Okay. Well, have you listened to my episodes before? Because that's normally the last question I ask you is what's one message you would want to share with the world? (laughs) Well, if you only had, but that's the thing. It's if you only could share one message, what message would it be? (laughs) You have psychic abilities? You answered it before I asked. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I could give you another one. <laughs> is that your is that the one you would share if you only were allowed yes. to share one forever? Yes. Yes. Yeah? Mind, yeah. body, yeah. and soul. Address yeah. them all. Mind, body and soul. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand that for sure. I definitely have to learn I had to learn that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, we all do. <laughs> yeah, you can't just address one for sure. Yeah. It's that all matters. Uh, that's awesome. Okay. So you are gonna, we'll have links in the show notes for the ebook for everyone who's listening, who wants to explore that happiness code option. And we'll have ways to get in touch with you in the show notes. What are the best ways to connect with you? So, um, yeah, I have on uh, my Instagram, uh, at my power of happiness, uh, there's a link in, in the link in bio, you can Contact me for a uh, one-on-one free call, or you can just DM me on on Instagram. You know that would be uh, one way. And then there's also TikTok. Okay. At the uh, same thing, my power of happiness. My power of happiness. I love it. What a fun name. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being willing to share in, you know, share into your own personal story and your personal journey, and then taking what you've learned and, uh, giving it back out into the world. I, something that you had said that I took a note on that I really loved is how you said, we serve the world by learning, living, and sharing. I really love that so much. And I feel like, especially for anybody who's been through really hard times or hit the rock bottom, whether it's emotional, mental, or physical challenges, I think that's been what a lot of us find to be the most beautiful aspect as we move through that healing journey and get uh, to the other side is that through that experience and everything we've learned, we now get to choose a different way of living and many of us often feel compelled to share. So that's really awesome that you're also doing that. And thanks for wanting to be on the podcast and share your message. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was really, um, you know, amazing. And I've had a fantastic uh, time. Yeah, of course. That is a wrap. If you found this episode supportive for you on your journey in some way, shoot me a voice memo on my website, ourpoweriswithin.com and tell me what you loved. Or maybe you have a topic that you would like to hear about on the podcast or a specific guest that you would like me to host. If so, send those requests to me in a DM, a voice memo, or you can join the private Facebook group where you can share your requests there. I look forward to always trying to bring on the show anybody or any topic that you guys want to hear. All right. And as always, until next time, make this week great.